Happy Friday, friends. We are super excited because we are on our first getaway, our first non-camping getaway since 2019. We're not hopping on a flight today, but we are taking an alternative mode of transportation, which I can't wait to see and show you guys. Um, but for now, we're about halfway to our destination, which is Rockland, Maine. We're at Bissell Brothers Brewing and we're picking up some necessities for our trip. And we're about halfway to Rockland, Maine. So come along with us on our journey. For our next stop, we drove from Fizzle Brothers to Wiscasset, Maine, in a bit of rain to get a lobster roll. Wiscasset is home to the very famous Red Eats, which is excellent. We've been to Red's Eats twice, but both times we had well over an hour wait. Sprague's Lobster is right across the street without a long wait. It offers a traditional lobster shack menu with easy parking, plenty of seating, and a great view. We wanted to see if there's actually a big difference between the two lobster shacks. Okay, now that we've eaten at Red's Eats and their competitor across the street, what do you think? I think everyone should have Red's Eats once and stand in the two, one and a half, two hour line and taste that and see, you know, it's really good. Like the lobster rolls overflowing, the scallops that we got last time were amazing. But you're committing to basically a three to three and a half hour meal. Sprigs, we showed up, they were very nice. We got our food in about 10 minutes. It was, you know, a very good lobster roll. The crab roll I actually really liked better than the lobster roll. And we were gonna be in and out in half an hour. So if you're like, I'd say if you're like driving to Acadia, something like that, you might be better off at Sprigs where you're getting more of like a quick meal, like a roadside stop. If you're in the area of Wiscasset or if you're into experiential dining and you just want to say I rated eight at Red Seats, it's definitely worth going to at least once. And we're here guys. This is our ride for the next four nights that tall ship in the back. Let's go check it out. On deck, attention for callers.
Hi guys, we just got back from our main Windjammer sailing tour where we spent four nights aboard the Victory Chimes, an American cargo vessel originally built in 1900. This tall ship is the last of its kind sailing. It was originally a cargo ship that moved primarily lumber up and down the eastern seaboard. Think about it as an old timey UPS. But eventually steamships and trains made this job more efficient and lots of these boats ended up in the trash heap. But this ship survived. It became a passenger vessel, originally bringing tourists out onto the Chesapeake Bay for sailing, and it made its way up to Maine for the same use. It's been owned by many people over the years, but one fun fact, this ship was once owned briefly by the Domino's Pizza Corporation, where they used it for corporate outings, and they renamed it the Domino Effect. I'm gonna go ahead and link down to the full history below because it is very interesting. I thought I'd give you a little bit more information about our sailing because it's a pretty unique adventure and maybe you'd like to do it too someday and you have some questions about it. So the Victory Chimes is one of nine independently owned sailing schooners that make up the Maine Windjammer Association. And these sailboats either sail out of Camden, Maine or Rockland, Maine. And I chose the Victory Chimes for a number of research reasons. I did some research to choose the ship over the others. And number one is it is the biggest ship in the fleet and it just simply looked the comfiest. The deck looked like there was plenty of room for all the passengers to kind of sprawl out and be comfortable during the four days that we were on the boat to look out on the main coast and just relax. And the cabins looked the roomiest. I'll get into cabins in a little bit later. Um, they're pretty, still pretty small, but of all of the ships, they looked the roomiest and it seemed like for the first time taking an adventure like this, just a little extra comfort would be great. I also was really drawn into the history. A lot of these boats are replicas, but this one is not. So it was kind of like sailing on a museum on the sea. And they had a band on board. So it looks like the Victory Chimes always tries to have a band for every sailing. And I just thought the entertainment, listening to music under the stars on deck of a boat would be magical. And you know, it was. Finally, there were just logistics. I wanted to sail for four nights and I only had a limited number of weekends that I could choose and the Victory Chimes had a sailing date for those reasons. So that is why I took the Victory Chimes. So this trip was primarily about sailing around the coast of Maine, in and around the islands that make up the coast of Maine, and getting into places where you can't really see unless you have a boat. We read a lot of books. Uh, we chatted with all the other passengers and the crew a lot. There was a lot of just staring out at the beautiful landscape and see it is a chill trip, but it was great. Every day you had a chance to help the crew with hoisting the sails, which was really fun and they really encouraged that. And I think just about everyone gave it a try at least one morning and they were pretty heavy sails, but it was really fun seeing how that process worked. We also were able to get off for one day. We went to Bucks Harbor, which was a tiny little harbor town on the coast of Maine and we got to walk around. It was a beautiful weather. There were wildflowers everywhere and just bring in the scenery and have a nice walk. And the other thing was listening to that band every night they played and it was awesome. They were playing Irish folk music and American folk music. It was a fiddler and a guitarist and um, a percussive instrument called the Bones. If you've never checked those out, look them up. It was a really fun thing to watch. So about those cabins, they were cozy, and that definitely means small. We had a standard bunk, and that meant that we had bunk beds, and we had one sink, and we had a shared head. Like, we only had a toilet that was shared by the rest of the ship. I was actually a little nervous about that, because they do get up to pee a lot at night. Is that TMI? 
Anyway, the ship isn't so big that the head was so far away, so it turned out to be not a big deal. And I felt like the mattresses and the linens were super comfy and cozy, and once I was snuggled into my bunk, I felt really comfortable. There are a few suites on board, and the benefit of the suites is that they have a full bed and a toilet, but I will say those suites still were small. I stuck my head in one of them and that bed takes up the entire room. But you know, I think having access to your toilet might be great if that's something you're worried about. There were just none available when we sailed, so I just sucked it up and used a shared head and it turned out just fine. But overall, these are small accommodations, which we were used to because we have the tiny RV. And honestly, our room on the boat was bigger than our RV. So that was not a big deal for us. Oh, and they also had showers on board, hot showers on board. They were shared. I think there were two or three showers and everyone really loved them. So that is not a problem. There is plenty of fresh water on ship to manage those. So people are gonna ask me, how is the food on board? And I will say the food was solid, but not exceptional. Now, this is an all-inclusive excursion, except for drinks, it is BYOB, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But we had breakfast, lunch, happy hour snacks, and dinner. And overall, the chef is new, and it is a new season, and they were not sailing last year in COVID. So I think there's a little bit of the chef getting his sea legs. Um, but he did an amazing job with seafood. He cooked mussels a couple of times, and they were really good. He smoked a side of salmon in the galley, which was incredible and probably the best thing we had all weekend, and that was for a happy hour. And then we had this great lobster um, clam bake on board, and it was great. There was plenty of lobster. I think I have two lobsters. And we got to just eat on deck, looking out at a beautiful cove in Maine, and it was just picture perfect. So that was wonderful. I do think that the chef made a couple of weird choices at breakfast, uh, but overall I was well fed. I was never hungry. About the BYOB, we really love that because it did allow us to stop at one of our favorite breweries on the way up and stock up. But the one thing I did not think of, and you should remember, is that BYOB also encompasses soft drinks. So on boat, we had plenty of fresh water and they did a good job. They made cucumber water and lemon water. So that was really nice. Um, coffee, orange juice at breakfast and tea that's pretty much what they provided. So if you wanted soda or juice or seltzer, just bring that on board. We didn't think about it. And I really, a couple of days wanted a seltzer, which you know, I got when I got back to land. So I feel like packing always produces a little anxiety, especially around a unique trip like this. And I would say, just remember one word, which is layers. You're gonna be on the coast of Maine, and even in the summer, it's gonna get a little chilly at night, and you're gonna hit winds because that's what makes the boat go. So you want it, you want an opportunity to kind of layer up if you get chilly and kind of take those layers off if you um, get warm. Also think waterproof. Now we got beautiful weather and we only had fog one day, but you never know. You might end up in a bunch of rain and you might not wanna stay in your cozy room the entire trip. So bring a pair of rain pants, which we brought and didn't use, and a waterproof jacket, which we did bring and we did use. And I brought a ski jacket because it is both warm and waterproof. So we really love this trip and there were a few favorites. So obviously just sailing on a boat in the main landscape, no brainer, that's amazing. And that's base level what was great about it. But I would say, honestly, what surprised me the most was chatting with the other passengers. After coming off of a year of being isolated because of the pandemic, it was such a breath of fresh air to be able to chat with people. I am not always the best at initiating conversations with strangers. I have no problem chatting if someone comes up to me, 
But, you know, I'm a little shy sometimes talking to new people. And it was not a problem. Everyone was super nice. Everyone came from, like, different diverse backgrounds. We had a journalist on board, a geologist, a veterinarian. We had a nurse. Um, the musicians were on board as passengers. You know, there was just like a diverse, wide range of people's backgrounds. And that made for really interesting conversations throughout the whole trip. The other great part of this trip was just simply watching the crew work. These guys and ladies love sailing so much. Most of them grew up sailing and some of them had literally sailed around the world on a ship like this. And so to watch them work was pretty incredible. They were like cats jumping on little teeny ledges and beams and up crazy ladders to do their work for the day. And it was kind of like watching Cirque du Soleil at sea. And then finally, really connecting with the history. I'm not the kind of person that really can soak in history easily by just reading in a book. It kind of just like makes my eyes glaze over when I'm doing that. But when I travel and I can touch and experience things, that's when I can really start to think about how things were in a different time. And it was really interesting just thinking about cargo being transported through this ship. And that's the main way for a while that people got goods. And just thinking about how economies change and transportation changes. The captain was super into the history and keeping that history alive. And that is why he does what he does, I think partially to keep a boat like this running. Not many people can run this boat anymore. It's not something that exists. And so that was really fun and enlightening. I would say above and beyond, this is a great trip for someone who is open-minded. First of all, no trip is going to be the same. I can take this same length of trip at the same dates next year, and it is going to be a totally different experience because the passengers are different. The weather is going to be different. The band is going to be different. We might get up three times instead of one times to walk around different harbors and ports. So I would say you have to be open-minded and flexible with what you expect is going to happen on this trip. You can expect there's going to be a lot of downtime and a lot of sailing, and that's pretty much it. You also have to be open-minded to share a small space with about 30 strangers for several days and be able to be interested in having a chat with random people for many days. And you also will need to be comfortable with the accommodations. The accommodations are cozy, they are small, they are rustic. You are on a boat built in 1900. They are not luxurious by any means. And so if you are really a person that wants to stay in a four to five star hotel for every trip, this is just not going to be your thing. But if you're open minded about it and just take it for what it is and want to snuggle cozily into your little bunk every night um, while at sea, you're going to do just fine. If you are a boat or history nerd, and I feel like those things probably go hand in hand, you will love this trip. We were on board with a guy whose wife surprised him with this trip and he was a total boat nerd and he was so excited to be on board. And quite frankly, it was so great to see someone kind of living their obsession. He spent, you know, the entire trip being just pretty much in awe of everything that was going on, chatting with the crew, and it was great. So if you love boats, if you love history, if you love both, you probably like this trip quite a bit. Finally, anyone who needs to check out of life for a little bit, this is a great trip. Like I've said several times, you are just sailing at sea most of the time. You're reading books, you are chat, making small talk with people, you're just staring out onto what the beautiful Maine coastline can bring to you. So if you need a relaxing trip, you don't want the same old beach vacation, this is a great option for that. So we would absolutely take this trip again, but probably not right away. Uh, I would say probably five years or so, we would probably consider taking a trip like this. It's, for us, it's really great because it's a quick drive up to Maine to get on the boat. So it's pretty easy for us. And I would say that 
I really enjoyed my time on this ship, but I'm also the type of person that likes to sample things. Like we go to Vegas a lot and I've rarely stayed at the same hotel because I just like to sample all the different accommodations. So I personally would probably just choose a different ship. Now that I know I was pretty comfortable um, in our cabin and on deck and all of that stuff, I think I would probably just choose a slightly different boat to just sample that experience. But that said, I did really enjoy my time on the Victory Chimes, and you probably will too if you're interested in this kind of trip. I'd also say this really made us interested in taking like a Caribbean sailing boat tour like this, just so that we would be able to sail in warmer waters and be able to jump off and swim and snorkel and that sort of thing. I mean, you can do that in Maine, but you might freeze. So that's it. That's our unique adventure on historic sailing ship. If you have any other questions about what it's like to take a trip like this, drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And if you like my travel content, give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe and that little bell button to be alerted when I launch a new video. Now go out and explore your world. Country road, take me home to the place. Tree Road